ceremonial senate session. On the recommendation of the Faculty of Arts, we award the Dr. Honoris Causa degree, Professor Joachim Funke. I would like to ask Professor Mihai Saibeli, Dean of the Faculty, to present here the scientific and academic activities of Professor Funke. Joachim Funke is a professor of psychology and head of the Department of Experimental and Theoretical Psychology at the University of Heidelberg. He is one of the most influential researchers in the study of problem solving and general intellectual abilities. His research interests include the development of thinking, complex problem solving, and the effects of dynamics on human decision making. His research received broad international attention as early as the 1980s when he reinterpreted problem solving and studied its development in a number of contexts. His recent work on the conception of dynamic problem solving and its computer-based assessment has had an enormous impact internationally. Dynamic problem solving became part of the PISA 2012 assessment when he was the chairman of the expert group on problem solving. He is an author or editor of more than a dozen books and has published over 300 books, chapters and papers in the loading journals of the field. Citation of his work number over 4,000. He has been guest professor at a number of universities, including the University of Freiburg, Melbourne, and Nanjing. Professor Funke has been collaborating with researchers at the University of Szeged for almost two decades, a fact which is reflected in numerous publications. He has given a number of scholarly lectures at Szeged, and since 2013, he has been a member of the academic staff of the Doctoral School of Education at the University of Szeged. Professor Funke, the Rector and the Senate of the University of Szeged are ready to award the Doctor Honoris Causa degree on you and confirm it by their handshake. I would like to ask you to put on your gown and accept the degree. very proud uh, that I will receive this honorary degree. Uh, I, it's my first honorary degree and I'm very proud that uh, Seged University gives it to me because it shows me the, um, uh, that, that our common research uh, has found um, a kind of reputation, a kind of uh, recognition that uh, I'm really proud that it is now made uh, public uh, uh, available and in, in, this, in, in form of this doctoral degree I'm very happy about it, to have it from Szeged University. I was aged uh, 11 or 12, I first visited uh, the public library at uh, Düsseldorf, my, my hometown, and I was impressed about this huge number of books explaining the world, showing how nature works, and so I was fascinated by science uh, as a young pupil, and this is one of, uh, I think, more um, uh, ingredients uh, to my scientific interest, but it started in uh, childhood, that's right. I was um, at the age of 18 thinking about uh, what to study. I wanted to go to university and because at that time I was uh, uh, also uh, impressed by philosophers uh, from ancient Greece, 
up to uh, German philosophers. I wanted to study philosophy and the German literature was also very fascinating to me. So I decided to start with philosophy and German literature. Psychology was a minor at that time because I thought it might be interesting, but it, it was not my main interest. That turned out some years later when I found this the most important issue for me to study psychology. But that took some years. When I was a student, I could never imagine to become a researcher or even a professor. So at, at that time when I was a student, I was thinking of a career as a librarian, for example. But later on in my studies, I learned that I had some interest in doing science and my teachers um, uh, fostered me and, and said, do it and try it. And I had the chance after uh, the end of my studies to start in a research project for two years. And I started and found it to be very uh, optimal for me because of the freedom you could do what you want to do. There were some global goals, but there were also many open spaces and that was fantastic. It started my wish to go this career even further. In that period, uh, I was impressed by my supervisor, Walter Hussi. Uh, he was one of the influ most influential persons at that time. Later, my boss, my, my former boss, Jürgen Bredenkamp, became an influential person because of his uh, openness to science and I have learned a lot uh, of how to motivate other persons from him. So uh, that was a kind of process. And even later, Dietrich Dörner, a very famous German psychologist, impressed me by his complex problem-solving research that was the beginning of a lifelong uh, attraction and since that time I'm doing research on problem-solving. <laughs> and what kind of memories do you have about your PhD years? PhD years, oh that was a, a time I never thought I would finish my PhD uh, and uh, there was indeed one point when I stopped a first PhD thesis because I thought I could not write it and I changed my topic for the PhD and then I had only one year time rest from my funding and so this one year was a very intensive work and it happened in the end that my supervisor accepted this PhD thesis and that was a great, great moment for me. I never thought that I would finish it, but it worked in the end. I found a topic of interest, problem solving, and I had some ideas how to uh, run research uh, in this area, some new uh, ideas, how to improve current uh, experiments, for example. That was uh, um, um, continuous development. I would not say there are stages. I, I moved to different places. I started my studies uh, at Düsseldorf, at my hometown. I moved to Switzerland, to Basel University. From there I moved to Trier University, which is a very small town at the uh, western border of Germany. I moved to Bonn University, from Bonn University to Greifswald University, from Greifswald University to my final destination, Heidelberg. So you see, main stages are different places which gave different input to my thinking, new ideas about how to approach science. So I would not say there are main stages, there are different phases, different uh, styles of influence from different groups of colleagues and researchers, so very difficult to say what are the main phases. What is a problem? I think in normal life sometimes we follow a goal and 
immediately we see, I do not know how to reach this goal. Then I have a problem. Yeah? And problem situations are fr frustrating situations because you have a goal and you do not know how to reach it. So, what do people do in order to reach uh, their goal? They invent solutions. Yeah? That is really important. If something does not work so as I wanted it, I try to correct it, I try to find fixes, and this is what we call problem solving. In the end, when I reach my goal, I'm happy and I, I can say I have solved a problem. I have overcome a barrier. Yeah, in academic terms we speak of bar barrier between my current position and the goal position and I have to overcome the barrier then the problem is solved. Problem solving is really important. Uh, we have uh, on a scale from simple problems, everyday simple problems, to um, problems which are really important. What is uh, the reason for people to be on earth? So it's a kind of fundamental questions and fundamental problems. The, sc the scale of problems is really very rich. And that's also a challenge for assessment. I'm interested in how to assess problem-solving competencies. For example, how good can someone reach goals uh, that he wanted to uh, reach? And for me, that's a uh, question, how can we assess the problem-solving competency in a very good way? And uh, that's not so easy. We use uh, in our laboratory research computer simulated scenarios. You know of wonderful games of uh, computer uh, situations where you have to uh, deal World of Warcraft, for example, problems. And we have a little bit uh, simpler uh, computer simulations where you have, for example, to manage a small um, um, tailor shop a shop producing shirts and you are in charge of the management decisions. You have to hire and fire people, you have to uh, organize the raw materials and the production process, you have to decide on how to sell your t-shirt on the market, delivery processes. Very complex situation and we simulate it in a computer situation Maybe for one hour you work with us and afterwards we can tell you something about your qualities, about your competencies as a problem-solving person. How good did you manage the tailor shop? And we have uh, full-scale persons who are very competent, uh, up to people who after one month of uh, uh, play destroyed the company because they have sold all the important things and lost the employees. So shit happens um, and we have a full scale of reactions in measuring the problem solving competencies. We have uh, had the chance to uh, run part of the international uh, program for student uh, assessment, the PISA enterprise, which addresses 15-year-old uh, students worldwide. And we now have a, a good knowledge about their competencies, how they deal with static and with dynamic problems uh, on a worldwide scale. And we see countries in which the 15-year-old uh, are very well prepared for dealing with such problems and other countries that are not so well prepared. Hungarian 15 years old are in a mid-range. So that the best ones come from Asia. That's an interesting um, experience, experience that the very good 15-year-old pupils, the best, come from uh, Asia. In the Europe context, uh, the European context, the uh, Finnish uh, pupils are best because they have a very good educational system. That's the explanation for that. 
we are searching for the background reasons, but the educational system is one of the major forces behind quality of uh, such outputs. You compare the countries and maybe it's not always a fair comparison because the conditions in the countries are totally different and you have rich countries, you have poor countries and so if you compare uh, country-wise um, the competencies it's always a question of fairness and we try to do our best but you cannot uh, guarantee that it's really a fair comparison. Our main conception in the PISA uh, 2012 uh, enterprise was um, to bring a new type of problem-solving situation into the assessment uh, arena, namely dynamic problems. Up to that point, PISA was concerned with static problems. Static problems uh, are problems where a situation is given, you think about the best solution and then write down your answer. A dynamic problem is one where you have a problem situation, you make a decision, something changes because of your decision and then you have to deal with the consequences of your decision and so on. For a longer time you control, for example, a, a system, you control uh, how something uh, works and you have to find out how it works. It's a, a kind of interaction. We call it also interaction problem solving. And the interactivity is really important. You exchange with your environment information and then you see how to react on that. This was the major um, change in the framework of problem solving that me and my expert group introduced. It was a very nice experience uh, to chair a group of experts from all over the world who gave their advice how to construct the uh, problem solving items and so it was uh, really a nice uh, experience and Benno Chapo from uh, Sagan University was one of the members of this group and so this is one of the personal connections. I met uh, Benno Chapo and his group on different conferences uh, long before PISA started. So our uh, collaboration um, on a, um, not on a formal, but, but on an informal way, our collaboration started uh, 10 or 15 years ago. But in the time of repeatedly meeting on the conferences, we became more and more aware that our ideas are similar and that cooperation should become more intensified and uh, Benno Chapo organized conferences at uh, Seged University, the SWE conferences. I participated at uh, nearly all of them and we contributed uh, in this process to problem solving research really new ideas and thanks to Benno he gave a platform also for younger researchers to connect and to uh, find their way into international uh, reputation. So th that was really uh, the begin of a very fruitful cooperation between Heidelberg University and Seged University. We also have now formal agreements between both universities for exchanging students and um, th that's I think a very good basis for uh, research cooperation. I think uh, Benno Chapo did something which is uh, on an international scale uh, really unique. He established uh, contact with a large number of schools. He established computer-based assessment in these schools and also at the same time he established a longitudinal 
study, which is really important to follow up uh, students over their uh, educational life to see how they start, how they grow up, how they develop their competencies and that's really a fantastic uh, study. I think he has seed something which we harvest in 10 years and so sometimes science uh, needs first to, to make the seed and later to harvest and I think Benno is a person who sees a lot. I, I teach uh, about complex problem solving. Um, that's my major uh, topic, to introduce uh, to the doctoral students the idea of interactive problem solving. Also to introduce the idea of computer-based assessment uh, of uh, this problem solving competencies. and. Um, so I hope that the uh, members of the um, doctoral school, school of education here at Seged uh, became uh, well informed about problem solving for their later educational practice. And that seems to me an important issue. I also know that uh, Junjivir Molna uh, is working on problem solving, so we have another person here at uh, Seged University uh, who is infected by my ideas uh, on problem solving and I'm very happy to have Junjivir here uh, as one representant of uh, problem solving uh, at Seged University. I love to hike around, I love to bike around, I love to read books. So I have uh, a lot of things besides my academic uh, obligations to get new ideas. I, I love to go to museums, uh, to get inspiration from other sources. So it's, um, I think, there is much more besides science which helps me to do good science and sometimes I think um, it, it's not extra time but it's additional time that I spend if I go sorry, through a museum and see some things which inspire me for my work. In Heidelberg, uh, in my hometown, uh, I'm uh, a famous DJ called DJ Funk and uh, students asked me uh, every year to uh, play my uh, playlist uh, on their parties. The last uh, activity was some weeks ago at the beginning of the winter term. I had the pleasure to uh, introduce the new students to my mu music and I love to uh, be a DJ. I love Seged. Uh, it, it's not only a nice place if the uh, sun is shining, as it was uh, in the last days, but I walk together with my wife uh, through the uh, city and uh, I remember so many nice places where we have uh, beautiful buildings, but also nice bars, Borpatika and whatever you uh, think of. Um, I, I love the Seged fish soup, the red one, which is a special uh, uh, tradition here at Seged. So there are many attractions for me to come to Seged besides the university. The university is the biggest attraction, I have to say that, but there are other attractions too and uh, I, I love to stay here. Thank you.